On this episode of Ghost Hunters International, GHI travels to American Samoa to investigate an abandoned girls' school overtaken by threatening tribal spirits. This is the stomping grounds of a spirit known as Tulia Tua. The team has been called in to find out if the school is safe to rebuild or if these territorial entities will put a stop to it. Oh. I saw up here eyes, glowing eyes. That freaked me out. Hidden forces are believed to possess their victims. <gasps> Something just touched my knee. Oh, dear God. <gasps> Something black passed right by us. I saw it. Are these Samoan island spirits still in power? And can they destroy future plans for this school? Was that you? Barry, was that you? No. That was a growl. Something's over there, straight ahead of us. Show yourself. Folks, welcome to the island of American Samoa. Susan, why are we standing at a bus stop? <laughs> well, unfortunately, this is a very small island. There's not a lot of rental cars available to us. So I've arranged for a local bus to come and pick us up to take us to a location. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it right over there. Oh, wow. <laughs> Was this the only bus without air conditioning, Susan? <laughs> what have we got coming up? We're going to be heading over to Otto Loma Girls School, which was established in the 1940s. It's been uninhabited for about 20 years and has been reclaimed by the jungle. Now, the story behind this place goes about a thousand years ago. There was this Samoan king by the name of Tulia Tua who came to visit the island and died here. Now, supposedly his spirit has an affinity for possessing unsuspected trespassers. The possessions have ended up in death. Wow. Now, there are also other claims of other apparitions and ghosts that haunt this location. People are getting touched. They've also been getting pushed, especially around the cemetery. Oh. You guys are going to meet our client, Zena Yese. His father-in-law owns the property we're going to investigate right now. And they have plans on rebuilding it and putting some good use to the property. And they want to know why are all these paranormal things happening, if it's safe to actually go in there and start building the place over again. Okay. Paul, were you able to pack the machetes and the cases? We have. We've got machetes in case we need them. We've got stuff ready in case it rains. This is going to be one of those cases where we just don't know what's going to happen. Wow. Hello? Hey, what's up? We weren't sure if we had arrived at the right place. Yeah, you guys came to the right place. Yeah. Good to see you. Like it. This is Chris. Hi. And this Good is Paul. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Welcome to Ataloma. I'm Zaina Yesterday, I'm a high school instructor here in American Samoa. Mm -hmm. Ataloma is located within the shrubs, so we're gonna have to take a little walk in there. I'm hoping GHI figures out what's going on, why is there claims that paranormal activity has happened here, and if there is none, uh, is it feasible to try and rebuild something here? Oh my god. This is insane. The only structure of its kind here in the South Pacific. My mother went to Altaloma Girls School. It's haunted by evil spirits watching over the land. Girls were possessed and killed by these dangerous spirits. Why did the building end up in such a bad state of repair? There's a couple of families battling over ownership of the land, including the building itself. So this place was thrown into limbo. We've had a couple of hurricanes in addition to a tsunami. This place is taking a beating. So what type of activity then happens here in this area? The story goes is, uh... What is that? What is that? What is that? Oh, my God. Uh, you're going to be getting those quite often. It's one of the reports here. 
uh, strange right. noises. A resident here was actually chopping bamboo in this section. And he claims that after chopping bamboo, he started looking at his hand and there was a big handprint on it as if somebody had grabbed him. Before he noticed the handprint, he was touched and then pushed. So this spirit that grabbed his, his hand, obviously an objection to, to cutting down the bamboo, do we know who this was? It was a spirit known as Tani, guardian spirit of the land, at times harmful. Uh, they like to say it, if you translate it roughly, vicious. So now, th this guy that was cutting the bamboo, was he Samoan? And he's originally from Rhode Island. Wasn't a plumber or anything, no? Oh, no. <laughs> just checking, I'm just checking, you know, throwing that one out there. And what else happens here? This is the stomping grounds of a spirit known as Tulia Tua, a uh, chief that we call him Matai. That's the word in Samoan. There were stories of girls getting possessed by this Tulia Tua. I was walking to the beach with my friends who went to the Adaloma Girls School when suddenly some of them started performing strange dances, screaming and pulling on their hair. They seemed to be possessed. We hurried back to the school. When the doctor arrived, the girls spoke in tongues and then they became quiet. The spirits seemed to have left their bodies. Welcome to the Lower East Room. It's a pleasure to be here. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> My father-in-law says that one night he witnessed the spirit of a Fijian woman, and uh, he claims the Fijian woman knew voodoo. Uh, he says she was dancing to flames, running in and out. He didn't know what language she was speaking. I think that's something we'll be keeping an eye out for during tonight's investigation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, um, shall we move on? What do you think of the back balcony? Sure. Check it out. Shoot. Welcome to the upstairs back balcony of the Ataloma building. What happens up here? People claim that they've looked out across this area and they see apparitions with red faces and green faces. If a person does anything that that the spirit doesn't like, I mean, are there certain things that you, you shouldn't do on oh, sacred yes, land? Yes, yes, there is. Seen as disrespectful if you let your hair loose and let it down. Yeah. Now, I want to add that Tuya Tua doesn't like to see people wearing hibiscus flower on your ear. It's called taboo. Why is that taboo? It attracts his attention. I see. Oh. Like a trigger object uh, almost. What's likely to happen? They call it slap by the ghost. Basically, this whole part of your face, the muscle would die out on. Shall we move on? Yes, we shall. All right. There is an unmarked girl's graveyard here. Good luck finding the graves. <laughs> so we're looking for piles of stone that are hidden exactly. under the undergrowth. The reasons that they were buried there, do you know? The girls that are buried there were actually possessed. So the possession was so extreme that it actually killed them? Exactly. OK. Now we're going to head down to the final destination, which is the mango tree, which has the city rock for Tulia Tua, okay. where everybody believes possession takes place. OK. Behind me, you see a mango tree with a sitting stone. It's all covered in dirt and shrubs. So the possession that can happen on this rock. It's believed that if you sit there, Tulia Tua would visit you. My experience with the Ataloma Girls School was quite interesting. I was young then. I've seen some incidents that happened, especially during the mango season. The girls would get the fruits from the trees, and that's when that girl will be possessed by the spirit to Tua. They have odd behavior. And that's when Tulia Tua spoke up through the girls. I want this girl. Some of the girls who got possessed, they died from, from that possession. We just finished the tour of Ataloma Girls School. There seems to be a lot of fear about multiple spirits here on the site. We have the spirits with the red and green face, the spirit in the courtyard, and we also have Tulia Tua. The question is, are they still here? Do they wish to communicate with us? We will have to be careful. There is a lot of spiritual dangers. Possession is a big component within this case. It's going to be interesting to see what develops as the night uh, approaches. There's no electricity at this place, so we decided to go handheld. We're going to use all our handheld equipment. We're going to set up cameras on tripods and hope that we might have better luck trying to capture something that way. I think I should do it there, Joe. Yeah. Yep. Okay. 
moving into the East Room. All right, so now what about this female apparition they've seen running in through here? Okay, let's get a look around this place. Chris and I were investigating the East Room of the Autolome Girls School. If there is a woman from Fiji, if her spirit is still here, we're asking you to come forward. We mean you no harm. We don't want to cause you any trouble. This was an area where a Fijian woman, a voodoo practitioner, was seen. There's somebody here, and you're just curious. You don't know why we're here. Don't be afraid to come out. We're told about you. Can you come out and say hello? I wonder how common voodoo was on the island. Really unheard of. Where possession happens, but possession here happens so fast. Um, even beyond voodoo. Voodoo happens when with uh, drums yeah. and beats and, and rhythms. Okay, I thought I saw shadow play. I started seeing what I thought was some sort of dark shadow. Got darker over there, did you see that? Just back and forward, just caught my attention. Right there, there's something big moved in there. darker over there. Did you see that? Right there. There's something big moved in there. Huh? Chris was seeing a shadow play, and after she had seen it, it did look like something stepped out from the corridor and into the room where we were and moved up the right-hand side of the wall. Please come out. We don't have any drums to beat. We're just trying to establish if uh, some of the claims of activity are true. Can you give us a sign? Give us a noise in the direction. Well, did you see that? What was it? I was looking this way, right, where the camera is, and then I saw movement here. So I turned to look at that, but it kept going like this, and then I saw some sort of red light, like right here. And I was thinking, IR. But there's no glass there to reflect the IR. I had seen some sort of movement in the corner, and when I looked at that corner, I had then seen this red light behind me. And the first thing I thought of was maybe IR reflecting off the window. But once I checked the window out, I realized there's no glass in it. So I have no idea what I had witnessed. Let's meet up with Paul and see if we can get a camera up here. Very like to have Paul change the camera positions to see if maybe we could capture whatever it was that I had seen. Crazy vines everywhere. This is all indoors. That's amazing. Creepy. It is super freaky. While Joe and I were investigating the main house, we went into the courtyard area to follow up on claims of a man who had been harvesting bamboo without permission. Uh, he very well might have angered the spirit Tane by uh, refusing to ask permission. His hand was grabbed as he was cutting the, the bamboo, and he had a handprint on his hand. Tani, the spirit, it attacked him. Oh, damn. Hello? We ask anyone that's here with us to please come forward. We know we don't belong here, and we're trespassers. We apologize. Can we have your permission to keep roaming the grounds? What is that? It's still moving. Hello? We don't mean any disrespect. We don't want to. Oof. Holy crap, are you serious? You alright? What's up? For a second, I saw a pair of eyes, glowing eyes. Really? Yeah. As soon as I came around, I had my flashlight. They just glowed back, and I kind of freaked a little bit, and I stood still. Wow, Joe. You don't think it was a dog? I would have seen, like, the, the brush still moving. I don't know what it was. Wow. Tony, please speak with us now. Hello. We'd like to know what's going on here. I'm not sure what it was. I could tell it was glowing back at me. It kind of startled me. Pretty frightening. Is anybody here? Can you hear us? Tony. We need you to come out and speak with us. 
This is bizarre. This place is like crazy. Did you, did you manage to find a flower? I did. All righty. Now, there's a rule with the flower. It's if you have it in the left side, it means you're single. If you have right. it on the right side, it means you're taken. I guess this might be the mango tree. Paul and I headed over to the mango tree to investigate the claims of this rock. Yeah. This is it here. The women that stay on top of the rock end up becoming possessed here. Whatever spirit is there likes the women to have their hair down and supposedly a hibiscus in their hair. So let's put on the left. I made sure to put down the melmeter and to see if maybe we could pick up some sort of energy readings. OK, we're good. Tane. I understand you are an ancient spirit. You protect these woods. This jungle belongs to you. You can touch me if you'd like. I wore my hair down just for you. Show me how strong you are, what you can do. <gasps> you all right? Holy You okay? What? Something just touched my knee. Yeah, I just saw the mail go off as well. Oh my God. That shouldn't be going off like that. Okay, if someone is manipulating this, if there is an entity here with us, then I need for you to step away, please. I'm seeing something weird on my camera. I'm starting to see shadows. Is, Me too. Uh, yeah? Yes. I saw shadows. Just over here? Yes. Yeah, that's where I was looking. There's really weird crap going on right now. Tulia Tua, you come forward now, please. No, screw it, just come forward. Let me say, please, now. Are you doing this right now? Oh, my God. What? I've turned the remote off. It's just taking photographs on its own. You're not doing it? No. What the hell? Can you hear that? Why is it doing this? I don't know. Tane, is that you? You can affect this machinery, can't you? It's getting faster. Is that you doing that? And it stops. My camera decided to malfunction. It must have taken nearly 100 photographs without any anybody uh, actually pressing the button. It's never done that before. Paul, My did camera. you hear that? What? It what? sounded like a moan. Where? She's coming from right over here. That was not in the distance. What I heard was right next to me. What spirit, if you're here? It's going off again. Something's over there, straight ahead of us. Holy I told you there's someone up there. Who is it? Show yourself. Who are you? Something's over there, straight ahead of us. Holy I told you there's someone up there. Who is it? Show yourself. Who are you? Come on, I'm going up there. Both Paul and I started hearing strange sounds. We have no idea where these sounds are coming from, much less the shadows or why the camera's going off by itself after me getting touched in the knee. It's really unnerving. Who's there? Tulia Tua? Was that you, you dirty old man? Tane! Tane, are you here with us? Give me a sign. We would very much like for you to come forward and talk to us. Talk to me. It's your last chance. <gasps> what the f is that? What? It, I just felt, um, I don't know how to explain it. I felt like if somebody poked my butt. Like, not just poked it, but like, kind of caressed it. Oh, dear God. <laughs> That's so weird. It seems to be the theme of the evening. I got groped, like, right on my behind. Um, it was unmistakable. It definitely startled me. There was nothing surrounding me at all. Was that you, you dirty old man? 
Did you grope Susan's butt? Show yourself. Come on! Now, immediately after Susan actually got groped, we started getting some anomalous energy readings from the Melmeter. Uh, so is this confirmation? Not, not yet. Let's see if we've got some audio to back that up. See if we've got something, uh, some video to back that up as well. Oh. Watch out for the vines. It's lots of debris, so be careful. I just can't believe the condition of this place. Holy cow. So we are looking for... Tulia Tua spirit or the spirit called Tani, mm -hmm. as well as an apparition of a Fijian woman that's all in white, and supposedly she was speaking in tongues and possibly black magic. Wow. So it's pretty crazy. What the hell what is that? What the hell is that? What is that? Something is moving up there. Hello? Hello? Is there anybody up there? Tulia Tua. Come out. My name is Joe. This is my friend Scott. We're only here to see if you are real. If that's you, can you make a loud sound again? We just want to try to talk with you. What the hell is that? Is anybody here with us? We need you to come out and speak with us. We come with all respect. Well, are you making those noises? Can you do it once more, please? Okay, we're coming up to meet you now. Wow. This is kind of creepy up here. Kinda? This is bizarre. Very strange. The whole place is just weird. Right through this window is where all that noise could was coming from. we have an idea of what was going on there? Yeah, I don't see anything. What could have made those noises? No idea. It didn't sound like an animal because that was too heavy of a sound. Right? Yeah. There's nothing here at all that would make that kind of a sound. I think we're getting close. Chris and I were investigating the graveyard of Autoluma uh, Girls School. This is the site where it's believed that the girls who were possessed were buried. I think it's right here. We could be walking on graves and we wouldn't even know it. No. I want to reach to any of the girls that are said to haunt this place. What happened to the girls? Tolly Atua, did you paralyze the girls? Is there something that we should fear in this jungle? Are you seeing anything? Oh, Whoever that is, Step forward to us. Is that like something's moving through the bushes? We okay, now it's starting to get eerie. Twilio Tua, if that's you, I thought you would have made a bigger appearance. I'm not seeing anything on the camera. Tua, the people here made it sound like we should fear you. Should we fear you? We ask that you walk towards us. Walk right up to us. Okay, dude, seriously? Like, something keeps moving over there. Talia Tua, we're not here to challenge you. We're just here to meet you. What's that? Where'd that come from? What? That white thing stabbing us. Thanks, Dominic. 
to get a closer look at it. Tony Atua, if that's you, I thought you would have made a bigger appearance. This place is so crazy. Barry and I were investigating the cemetery of Altaloma Girls School, and this is the area where they say that previous students were possessed and then buried here on the grounds. So, well, to, uh, I'd like to see what you're capable of. We want you to lead us to where you are. If you're not going to come out to us, make some noise so we know where to find you. Really loud for no reason. You did ask for a noise. Yeah, but why freaking cricket? That's creepy as hell. Where is that coming from? That's bizarre. Tony Atua, if that's you, make it stop. We did ask them to make it stop. Cricket's on command. Well, is that suppose... his big magical power? It's not very convincing if that's all he can do. I would think a big, powerful spirit could think of something a little bit more creative than sounding off crickets. What if it's not him? Was that you? Barry, was that you? No. Did you hear that? Yes. That was a growl. We heard something like a growl, and this is something we're going to be looking for within some of the footage. I'm not impressed right now. If crickets are the best you can do, Pretty lame. Is that rain? What the hell's that? I don't know. Is it rain? It's rain. It's right? rain. Here, under the street tree. He started kind of provoking, and I said that the crickets weren't good enough. I wanted some sort of sign. And it just started downpouring. <laughs> OK, we yeah. in? Great. I like to chalk it up to coincidence, but who knows? We have all our equipment running, so God only knows what we may have caught on that. Thank you, Nature Spirits. Yeah, we have to stick to this one balcony here. Yeah, I go first. If it could support you, then I know it could support me. Oh, that's me. just rude, so to speak. Paul and I headed upstairs to the balcony area to see if we can figure out where these dragging footstep sounds that Joe and Scott had heard were coming from, as well as maybe experiencing these faces that have been seen from the balcony. So what do you think these faces are? Do you think that they're like spirits from the forest? Do you think this is... Do you hear that? metallic it's around here it's that it's the vines it's the wiring and the vines hitting against the tin yeah i know joe and scott were hearing crazy crap that could be it yeah seems like there was some sort of vine attached to these wirings that any time it would catch a breeze, it would drag the wire across the floor and bang it against the wall, making that creepy sound. It's just rubbing on the metal and whatnot. What's that? What? Someone just called my name. A female called my name. What? I just heard my name called. It sounded like it actually came from out there. I had this out here the whole time. It interrupted me. It was like it, it was like a whisper, but it shouted. Like Paul. Yeah. Are there any of the girls from the school here? Now I heard my name being called. Therefore, maybe someone's trying to get my attention here. You've got it. I did hear my name being called out. Now, I then attempted to try and communicate with whoever we were trying to catch in my attention. Um, and hopefully, they did communicate with us. Is there something you need to say to me? If there is somebody here, there's an opportunity for you to say it. Anyone here with us? Tulia Tua. They say it's your spirit that perhaps is in the tree or in the rock below it. We had friends here earlier. We had a beautiful girl on our team. She said that you may have touched her. 
Were you attracted to her beauty? What was that? What? Did you hear a growl? Yeah. I heard what sounded like a, a low, rumbling growl. It didn't sound like an animal. Is that you trying to communicate with us? Can I see the camera for one second? See if I can pick that up? To just for a second. So Spirit, Tawny, we were up in the main house, and when I looked in the jungle, I thought I saw a pair of glowing eyes. Could that have been you? Let me get up, Joe. You want to grab that? <laughs> That was something black. It passed right by us. I'm gonna get up, Joe. You wanna grab this? What the hell was that? That was something black. It passed right by us. Oh, I heard that. I saw it. You see it? it I heard black. like grass move. Like, okay. It just went. Yeah, I'm getting up now. It like walked in and it went that way. I scared the out of me. I did, in fact, hear some of the, the trees rustling uh, in the same area, so that, that made me uh, believe that I, I, too, witnessed that. I don't know where that would come from, because look how far that is. We would have heard it. It does drop. Look down. how far it dropped. Yeah. There's about oh, a good 15 feet. Oh, I was sitting over there, believe me, yeah. Very strange. Tony, if that was you, are you able to shapeshift? Can you perhaps manifest in some other way? Can you let us see your face? Damn. What happened? I felt like I got electrocuted. Just real quick, it got really cold, and just real, like, just like a, I don't know. I don't know what the hell that was. You got goosebumps. I know. And it's, like, really hot here. It got really cold, and it just felt like, wow. like, strong, and just, like, that freaked me out. I had a, a quick jolt. It was like a very strong, intense feeling of energy rushing through my body. It really caught me off guard. I'm still unnerved by it. I, I don't know what I just experienced. Wow. Nasty. Very nasty. God. So the jungle's watching us? Yeah. Chris and I were investigating the balcony of the Autoloma Girls' School. We were told about these stories of faces that were seen, green and red faces. Okay. We went up there with a the thermal camera and our IR camera to see if maybe we'd have the same experience. What was that? What? Right there. I was seeing a light move. Whatever it was. It was right at the end of that hallway. Tony Tua. Are you trying to frighten people out of the jungle? Do you not want anyone here? Did you see something? Not in the thermal. Bear, don't go too far, please. That's as far as I'm going. I'm not seeing anything in this. Let's get back down again. Okay. So it'll be interesting to see if anything like green and red faces has come around and maybe has made its appearance known either on our video equipment or audio. So this out here is the courtyard? Yeah, that's the courtyard. Paul and I headed to the courtyard of the school to investigate this claim of a man who was held physically by an unseen force from chopping down bamboo in the courtyard. Well, that looks like a good bit of bamboo to chop down. All right, well, then I'll move. OK. I'm going to be chopping down your bamboo. Whoa. Is someone going to stop me? Tane is the protector of the, the jungle here. Can you give us a sign of your presence? Last one, this will go. You chopped down a pretty good portion of that. Anyone? And with a few good whacks, I did take down one of the bamboo uh, stalks. 
Nothing seemed to stop me, though. I didn't feel pushed, I didn't feel grabbed. However, Susan had the, uh, the night vision camera, and obviously we were running audio as well. So maybe something did come through. Maybe something did ask me not to do it, or someone was getting somewhat agitated. It wasn't something we were able to hear or feel at the time, but uh, obviously when it comes to analysis, uh, we'll find out if someone did try and stop me. OK, guys, um, let's, uh, let's get everything wrapped up and we'll meet you down in the road. The bus will be here shortly to pick us up. We just concluded our investigation of Autoloma Girls' School on the American Samoa. It was an amazing investigation. The main reason we were here, of course, was to try and see if we could establish contact with this cheating spirit, Tulia Tua, and see if there was going to be anything here which may cause harm if Autoloma Girls' School was to go forward to development. So how's the analysis going for Ataluma Girls School? Actually, it's going, uh, going pretty good. There's a few other things of interest. I think we all experienced, uh, at one point, some sort of shadow play. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you were yeah. experiencing yeah. stuff. It was weird. It happened a couple times in the East Room and took up half the doorway, and then it went in towards the wall. Now, Joe, I believe you also seen some type of shadow. Yes, uh, Scott and I were investigating by the by the mango tree, and uh, all of a sudden I see this black mass come from the cliff down below, up and through the woods. Oh. Yeah. I know, Chris, up in the cemetery you had heard uh, th this growl, mm -hmm. and I'd also heard that some of you guys had heard something similar. I heard a growl at the mango tree again. Same thing happened. I heard the growl by the mango tree. Of course, all these experiences are great, but uh, what have we collected evidence-wise? Now, what I'd like to show you, actually, is uh, some video footage uh, from the DVR cameras that we placed. Now, this is down by the mango tree, and we've seen these light anomalies before, but this one's a little different. Yes. Um, and what we want to be looking at is this area right here. Yes, please. What is that? It's completely bizarre. Zena. Thank you for meeting us again. The Ataloma Girls' School really did give us a run for our money. But during the investigation, we were having some unusual things that were happening, <laughs> a lot of personal experiences. During one part of the investigation, Chris did say, Tulia Tua, if you are here, give us a sign that you're here. And suddenly, the crickets started all over the forest, and it started from one end of the valley and traveled up all the way around. Did it get pretty loud? Yeah, and, and then Chris went on to say, show us something else. Then the heavens opened, and we got absolutely soaked through to the skin from the rain. Interesting. Now, during the investigation, Paul and Susan were working down on the mango tree. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the site where people are said to be possessed suddenly. Susan was standing down on the rock, and mm -hmm. Paul was standing off with a camera. And suddenly, for no apparent reason, this camera started taking its own photographs over and over and over. Unfortunately, whenever we went back to analysis, there was nothing unusual that was, that was caught in the photographs. But it was certainly something which Paul found very hard to explain. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> now, we're going to show you Scott and Joe, and they're investigating here in the school. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a piece of audio you're listening for. They'll come in right over them talking. Really? That's like somebody picking something up that's and moving it. Wind or that's like deliberate Shut movement. Like Sounds like one. It's so, like a male voice. Something up and moving it. Wind or that's like deliberate Shut movement. This is what it sounds like in Samoan. Hey, so, hey, look, yo. Mm -hmm. Cow, yo. Which means in Samoan, hey, come here, let's go over there. Go over there. Wind or that's like wind or that's like wind or that's like wind or that's like. It wasn't the only thing that, that we had uh, that we had captured. There's something up at the graveyard. What we want to bring to your attention is this flash of light which appears over to the left-hand side. Now, this happens very fast, and it's something which is new to us because it's a different type of design of light that we usually tend to see. There you go. Now, I'll just run that back over that again. Hmm. There was no reason why this light should have appeared there. It was extremely strange. That's interesting that you guys had that. That wasn't the only time that this type of phenomenon was captured. We also had another camera at the mango tree, mm -hmm. which is in the distance. And this light seems to appear in here.
Did that just turn green? That's what Paul had reported as well. He said this was an unusual green light. That actually looked like a face. I see it a lot of times with a lot of my people here, the girls, but to leave their hair right here. Mm -hmm. Look like the half of the face on this side. How do you feel about seeing that? Ah, oh, yeah, speechless. <laughs> it almost looked as if uh, someone was peeping out, playing hide and seek yeah. style. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. We do have some research that we wanted to share with you as well that Chris had discovered. Yeah, you're telling us about people being touched in their face, looking like they got a stroke, like it's hanging mm -hmm. on one side. So I looked into the mangoes, and I found out that mangoes are actually from the same plant family as poison ivy and poison oak. I also read about accounts of people who were severely allergic to it, where their whole face and neck and everything would swell up, and then after the swelling was gone, their face would kind of hang, because the skin was now loose. So. Is that what happened to these girls? I don't know, but it's mm -hmm. just a possible explanation. So, Zeno, from what you've heard so far, how do you feel now about what we're presenting to you? It's just like a very uplifting feeling that I got inside. These personal experiences all of you have been having actually corroborates with a lot of what everyone's saying. There is something unusual going on here at this site. With the processes that we use, we do see signs of paranormal. But for us, it's not enough for us to call it haunted mm -hmm. um, because we're not seeing the evidence of ghosts as much here. Certainly not enough that we would deem this mm -hmm. place haunted. And I think the important thing all around is like the, the one question you had is whether or not this place was safe to mm -hmm. restore. And honestly, we don't see any reason why it isn't. That's great news, great news right there. And uh, wish you the best for the future. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I'm glad the way it turned out, this place needs to move on. It needs to be restored to its former glory in respect with whatever's here. I'm grateful that GHI came out and uh, shed some light on this whole area. That was a great reveal, Chris. I was glad that the Xenon was happy what we were bringing forward to him. And we learned things out of it as well. Like that EVP, we had no idea what that was saying. Yeah. And it was good to bring it to him to understand what was truly being said through that native language. So I think all in all, we had a great case. We did. And you know what? I think I made to another claim just sitting here right now. Uh -huh. It's hotter than hell. And if I wasn't on this bus, I'd be in that water. <laughs> <laughs> I would be right behind you on that one.